Hey, John here. In today's lesson, we're going to look at some ear training. And I think ear training is super important. If you want to be able to play whatever you want to play on your instrument, you need to be able to identify what you hear, be able to find it on the fretboard, and you need the technique to execute it. If you have those three together, you're more likely to be able to play what you want to play. And that doesn't really matter if it's rhythm guitar or lead guitar. So to help you with one of those aspects today, I'm going to show you a really great ear training exercise and also the thinking behind it. So this is what the exercise looks like once you've done it for a while, but I'm going to give you some easier steps to get here as well. So don't worry. Basically, you just want to start with a low E string, ringing like this, and then I'm going to pick any string, any fret. And obviously, I don't want to look when I do this, so I usually close my eyes. So I just do this. Now I want to find out, listen and like what note is this? Oh, that's the fourth. And then I want to find the closest root note. And I can go up here, I can go down here. It doesn't really matter. And then I keep going. That's the fifth. That's the fourth again. That's the, the major seven. That's the major seven. That's the root. That's the second. That's the second. That's the second. The major seven. That's the sixth. So you see, that's the idea behind it. So a little backstory here. When I started playing, early 90s, my dad had really good ears. He played guitar and he was sort of famous for having good ears. He didn't really help out because he thought that as well, that it was all about talent and you had good ears or you didn't. Uh, so hearing that as a 13 year old, I was quite insecure and I was basically paranoid that, oh, maybe I don't have that talent. I was very happy when I was reading a Guitar World magazine six months into my playing journey and it was some ear training course that they advertised. And I was like, what? How can they advertise that? Because you can't work on that. And then I realized, oh, you can work on ear training. Wow, okay. So from that moment on, I was like obsessed with ear training. So I tried to find out all about it. And this was, like I said, in the early 90s. Hello, grandpa. Uh, so no internet or anything. So you kind of have to find things little by little. So the first thing I learned about when it came to ear training was learning absolute intervals. And what I mean by that is that you learn that, okay, from C to G, that's a perfect fifth. So I have an ascending perfect fifth, and then I have a descending perfect fifth. And you know, you have a perfect fourth, you have a perfect, uh, you have a major second, a minor second, and so on. And that felt logical at first, but as I learned these intervals, I realized that it didn't really, really help me that much when it came to improvisation and things like that. So it wasn't until I realized that you need to learn things in context, because that's how we hear music. Because if I play an interval like this, you might feel like, wow, that sounds really dissonant, right? But if I add the A note here, now all of a sudden it's quite beautiful. And that's because the context of the notes changed. So we had, when I play this first, you heard this as the root note automatically because we tend to uh, relate the lowest note as the root note. So this interval then will be a, a flat second, very dissonant. But when I added the A here, this changed to be the second and this changed to the flat three. So now it's all of a sudden quite a pretty chord. You can probably see that the context is very important. And when it comes to the intervals again, why the intervals are not that practical. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn your intervals, but by working on functional intervals instead, that's what I talked about here, when you actually relate every note back to the perceived root note. If we look at the any major scale, we're gonna have six perfect fifths. We're gonna have per perfect fifths between one and five, two and six, three and seven, four and one, five and two, six and three, and then the last one is not a perfect fifth, that's the odd duck and that's the flat five. But we have six perfect fifths. So if we were jamming and you were like, amazing at hearing these absolute intervals and we're in C major and I'm playing and you'll be like that's a fifth great but if you can only hear that it's a fifth and you can't hear that it's the context then you have one in six that you're gonna actually find out the correct notes however if you can hear all the notes of a major scale for example that you can hear you know what the root sounds like, what the second sounds like, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Then you're way better off because in the same example again, I'm playing the fifth and you're going to be like, oh, you hear one and five. 
And if I happen to play the fifth from the second to the sixth, it's a completely different sound. But you will still hear that because, okay, that's the second and that's the sixth. Oh, that's this uh, th three and seven and so on. So you can see that these intervals really sound different depending on the context. So it's this functional ear training that enables me to do what I just did before in the opening of the video. I have written out notation for this. It's basically just uh, the top E string here, starting with an open string. And first of all, you have the E major scale. It's a one string, one octave like that. Written out with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. I also wrote out the chromatic intervals. And when I mean chromatic intervals here, it's just the intervals in between the major scale steps. Uh, and I wrote them out in two ways because the flat five can also be seen as a sharp four, depending on the context. The whole point here is ear training and you just need a basic understanding of these intervals to be able to find your way. So if you're completely new to this, just learn the major scale on the top E string first. And basically you want to put the number on the correct note. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one. And each of these notes will have their own personality. So what I mean by that is that the root note feels like it's resting. Second note feels like it wants to go somewhere, but it doesn't really tell you where it wants to go. So it can go up to three, or it can go back to one. The third also feels resting. And then the fourth kind of wants to lead back to the third. And then the fifth also wants to go back to the root. Can go up though, or can go down. And then the sixth is kind of like the second in, in that it wants to move somewhere, it has some energy to it, uh, but it doesn't really tell you if it wants to go back to five or up to seven. And finally seven really wants to go back up to the root. So that's the basic idea behind all this and how I can hear this stuff and identify it. Then if you think about it, it's only 11 intervals. So it's not an endless amount of, of information here. So if you've tried ear training before and it didn't go so well and you feel a bit scared about this, think of it this way. All ear training is, is putting names on sounds. And we all have the ability to recognize sounds and say what, what sound that is. Uh, so if I would ask you about your playlist, for example, if I would play one song from your Spotify playlist or Apple Music or whatever, you would probably be able to identify it right away and be like, yeah, that's that song by that artist. And that's the same part of the brain we use to learn this stuff as well. It's just that this is a bit nerdier and a bit more, you know, in depth. The only difference here is that you probably haven't done it before and you haven't put the names on these sounds. So they've kind of just went in one ear out the other, right? So you don't really pay attention to what you listen to. But it's the same thing. So if you can recognize your favorite songs, you can learn this as well. So if you're new to this stuff, just start by learning the major scale on the high E string. And a good way to do that is to simply sing along with the notes. You sing one, sing two, sing three, sing four, but you actually sing the pitch. But you do that against the E string, so you can hear the resonance of all these notes against the E string. So you kind of both feel the interval, but you're also gonna hear it. And that's the fastest way to learn this stuff. So let's say you want to spend 10 minutes on ear training, spend five minutes doing the intervals, just singing them up and down the major scale. And then you basically do a simplified version of the actual exercise that I showed you in the beginning. So just stick to the high E string here. And so you play the note, close your eyes, pick a note at random. I can hear that's the seventh. And let's say you thought it was the sixth, then you want to go to the sixth and listen what that sounds like and you know, sing it again. So you sing the sixth, you sing the seventh, you sing the sixth, you sing the seventh. You know, that's enough. You do a couple of reps like that just to correct yourself. And that's how you're gonna learn these intervals. So you're both testing yourself by doing it, but you're also correcting yourself when you get something wrong. So don't get discouraged if you get something wrong. You're going to get stuff wrong. That's, that's the whole point. That's how you learn. So don't worry about that. And then you can just add the other strings when you start feeling comfortable. And what I like to do, because I still do this one, it's like a good warm up thing for my ear. So I like to add notes in between as well. So I don't just go, that's the fifth and I go up to the fifth. Instead, I try to add something 
you know, whatever I, I, I feel like adding in between. So it sounds a bit more like a melody. So I'm not just going from one interval to the next. Some intervals I might do that. I try to make it a more musical way back to the root note. So something like this. Uh, okay. So that's the sixth. So I go up to the root like that. That's the seventh. That's the flat second. That's the fourth. That's the second. That's the fifth. That's the major seven. And so on, you get the idea. And obviously this will help a lot with improvising. So I highly suggest that you start adding these more musical ways of getting back to the root as you do this more and more. Now it's your turn. So start at whatever level you're at. It's totally fine to just sing the major scale up and down and that can be your ear training. But as soon as possible, at least try this single string version of what I showed you and correct your mistakes. If you do that for five minutes per day and you sing the major scale for five minutes per day, within a few weeks you will find that all of a sudden things start to come together and you start hearing how these notes actually have their own personalities. So if you enjoy this kind of stuff and you want me to do more stuff on ear training, let me know. Otherwise, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments and I will help you out as soon as possible.